Welcome everybody to the second lesson in our um, <clears throat> uh, in the unit, our ocean circulation part two. And this one's on geostrophic flow, and the basic premise of geostrophic flow, or the the, the take home that you need to remember, is that it's flow that's caused by the by the balance between gravity on Earth, or any any force of gravity, and Coriolis, which we learned about last lesson. So let's see exactly what I mean. So in the grandest view of the Earth, right, we have rotation. Let's forget about Coriolis for a minute. But we have rotation, and with rotation, we get centrifugal and centri centripetal and centrifugal forces, right? Well, centrifugal forces, the center fleeing forces, would would um, would tend in the in the axis of rotation to send the ocean bulging towards the outside of the Earth. So piling up all the water out here towards the outermost and strongest part of the rotational um, force. But gravity fights that, um, counteracts it, if you will. So if we look at, um, instead of all the ocean piling up on the outsides of the ocean at the, at the equator, essentially, and having no oceans or, uh, as we go towards the poles, um, gravity counteracts that spinning. So that's one step one example of how gravity could could counteract um, a force and uh, in fact the rotation of the earth um, include and, and um, combined with the the pull of the moon on the earth's oceans um, and the sun um, which we'll get into later when we get into tides um, does cause the ocean to bulge to be a bit deeper at the around the equators and shallower uh, as you go towards the poles but gravity balances it and makes sure that there's ocean everywhere that that's possible on earth <clears throat> again before we we add Coriolis into the mix let's talk about pressure gradients and flow how flow is 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 formed in the first place you get flow of any fluid media when you have any kind of pressure gradient. So you have an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure and the thing that I will say ad nauseum um, and that you will need to be able to answer at a knee-jerk response is that flow always travels from high to low. And You can think of it this way, high pressure, let's say we have a pile of air here, we have a pile of water, we have a pile of rocks, we have a pile of anything. Um, but let's think of this as a water, a column of, of water or a column of air. If we stack water or air all the way up to here, there is more mass and more weight, and the gravity, the effect that gravity has on that column is a lot larger than it does on a lower stacked column. So if we have a big stack of it, uh, we have higher amount of pressure due to gravity forcing this way. And since it can't just continually go this way, it has to go somewhere. And usually that pressure will go from, it's just like diffusion, it'll go from an area of high concentration to low. So just remember that flow of flu any fluid media always travels from high to low pressure. <clears throat> now let's talk about geostrophic flow. Here we have our, if we have a system where low pressure exists on the outsides of that system, all the way around that system, and, and, and high pressure exists in the center, we call that a high pressure center. So we have a higher stack here, the flow wants to go from high to low. Well, we have that on the opposite side as well, so we have the, a divergence here, right? We have high pressure on either side of this symmetrical system, and we have, pressure, we have the flow going from high to low over here, the flow going from high to low over here. Now let's add in Coriolis, right? So this is, this is flow caused by gravity. If we add in Coriolis, which says that the apparent path of anything moving, including, including um, a fluid media in, in a pressure gradient, is apparently deflected. Right? So in the northern hemisphere it's deflected to the right. right? So if we're looking at a cross section of this high pressure center and the flow is going this way to the right on the screen, deflection to the right would be out of the screen. So this, if you could picture this spinning out of the screen. So flow is going this way and spinning this way. Here the pressure is going from high to low, but it's going to our left, and so to the right of that direction would be into the screen. Okay, so if you can picture that going into the screen, this going out of the screen, we also can depict out of the screen sometimes by a circle with a dot in the middle, so that's depicting like an arrow coming at us, and flow going into the screen we can depict as a circle with a 
X in the middle, and you can think of that as the feathers of the arrow. So that's going into the screen, that's coming out. And when you look at this system from above, the center is high. The flow is going from high to low here, from high to low here. But Coriolis is deflecting it this way, to the right here, this way. Flow is going this way, deflecting to the right this way. And that sends this whole system in a circular clockwise um, circulating pattern. Now let's talk about a low pressure center. So that's if you have high pressure, center, high pressure on, on the outsides of a system and low pressure in the middle, we call that a low pressure system. And we have similar dynamics but in the opposite direction. So flow always goes from high to low. So now the pressure, the flow is going initially towards the center. Right from here towards the center, from high pressure towards the center, from high to low. But now we have the flow is going from this way but it's spinning if it's deflected to the right, it's deflected out of the screen here, right, so towards us here, and if it's going from high to low here, it's deflected into the screen here, so that's to the right, to the right, and if you look at that system from, from above, we have a low pressure center, high pressure around the outside, flow goes from high to low, but deflects to the right. Flow goes from high to low, deflects to the right. And you do that all the way around this system, and this constant pushing this way starts the system circulating this way in a counterclockwise motion. Okay? Right, so here's the high pressure system again. Flows going from out from the center, but rotating to the right in this system. If we go to the low pressure center again, pressure's going towards the center in a clockwise circulating. Pro um, circulating motion in this system. An example of a low pressure center, a, a very familiar example, uh, would be a hurricane. So we have um, an example of a pressure gradient that's very, very strong. Um, the very center of a hurricane is low pressure. Um, so the air is rushing in from the outside because the high pressure is on the outside. It's rushing in so strongly and being rotated so strongly that it sets up this low pressure center which gives us our counterclockwise motion. And when you have a, uh, um, a pressure gradient, a low pressure center that sets up a counterclockwise system, we call that a cyclone. And a hurricane is a good example of that. When you have the opposite, it's called an anticyclone. So a high pressure center um, we get clockwise motion, and you see that normally in weather patterns, we associate a high pressure center or an anticyclone with good weather. You can see that this entire area of the map is clear with no clouds, and it's kind of good weather. Or it could be a high pressure center, could be a stormy, um, but it's usually a very gentle storm. So this would be like your long term but light rains rather than uh, vicious winds and strong winds. Um, I have a picture of a tornado here, All right? So this is going clockwise rather than counterclockwise, and we call that an anticyclone. Um, the majority of tornadoes are cyclones or go counterclockwise and are low pressure centers, just like just like hurricanes are. But I do put the tornado up here as an example of something that can be an anticyclone, um, anywhere about uh, anywhere on the order of about 5% something like this of of tornadoes can end up spinning in the wrong direction because their pressure centers um, uh, are set up differently so so a tornado can be an anticyclone but most of them are, are actually cyclones just like hurricanes um, so that's the beginnings of geostrophic flow we're going to put to put it together piece by piece um, uh, and put it together with atmospheric circulation in the next lesson. Thank you.